Welcome, and thank you for choosing Jackson Hospital. This online class is intended to help you prepare for spine surgery by educating you on what to expect during your surgery experience. Watch this video with your family and any caretakers you'll have during and after surgery so they'll be better able to assist you. During this online class, our goal is to provide basic information on spine anatomy and common spine procedures. Remember, the information in this class will not replace the information you receive from your doctor, nurses, and the other members of your spine surgery team, but should help guide you through the spine surgery process. The spine has five sections, made up of bones called vertebrae. Each section of the spine has its own unique function. The cervical spine supports the skull and allows for neck movement. The thoracic spine, the upper portion of the back or trunk region of the body, attaches to the ribs, which protect many vital organs, including the heart and lungs. The lumbar spine, or lower back, is the primary weight-bearing portion of the spine. The sacrum forms the base of the spine, and the coccyx, also called the tailbone, allows for the attachment of muscles, ligaments, and tendons. As a unit, the spine is responsible for providing support, but also allowing movement and flexibility for our bodies while protecting the spinal cord. The cervical spine is made up of seven vertebrae. Discs separate the vertebrae and support movement of the neck. Each disc is made up of the nucleus pulposus, the jelly-like inner core, and the annulus fibrosus, the thick ring of tissue around the outside of the disc. The foramina are openings in the spine that allow vessels and nerves to pass through. Each vertebrae stacks to form a tube-like structure that houses and protects the spinal cord. This is called the spinal canal. You begin to have symptoms such as pain and numbness when the structures of the spine develop abnormal motion or compressed nerves. Disorders of the spine often cause compression on the spinal cord and nerves, resulting in pain. What are examples of spine disorders? Herniation is tissue protruding through an opening. An example is a herniated disc, also known as a ruptured disc. Radiculopathy is a condition caused by the compression of the nerve root. Stenosis is narrowing of the spinal canal. Myelopathy is a condition caused by the compression of the spinal cord. Spondylosis is degeneration or deterioration of the spine. Your surgeon will use diagnostic tests to determine the source of any spine abnormalities and will share those findings with you. You and your surgeon will work together to determine the correct plan for your care. Common diagnostic tests before spine surgery are magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, computerized tomography, CT scan, and x-rays. Each test shows different aspects of your spine and the surrounding areas. Your surgeon will determine what testing is required for you. Ask your surgeon if you have any questions about why a test is ordered or how a test is performed. What are some common spine procedures? A laminectomy is the removal of the lamina and is done to increase the space in the spinal canal and relieve pressure on the spinal cord and nerve roots. A discectomy is the partial or full removal of the disc located between two vertebrae. A spinal fusion is the fusing of two or more vertebrae and may be done at the same time as a discectomy. A spinal fusion helps stabilize the spine. Here is one example of a cervical spine surgery. 
The photo shows herniated discs with an anterior cervical spine discectomy and fusion. If you have questions about your procedure, please ask your surgeon during your pre-op appointment. Thank you for watching. Please see our additional cervical spine surgery videos for information on preparing for surgery, what to expect from your surgical experience, and after surgery care. Our spine team looks forward to caring for you. Just remember, at Jackson Hospital, we've got your back. Welcome, and thank you for choosing Jackson Hospital. This online class is intended to help you prepare for spine surgery by educating you on what to expect during your surgery experience. Watch this video with your family and any caretakers you'll have during and after surgery so they'll be better able to assist you. During this online class, our goal is to provide basic information on what to expect while you're preparing for cervical spine surgery. Remember, the information in this class will not replace the information you receive from your doctor, nurses, and other members of your spine surgery team, but should help guide you through the spine surgery process. There are several steps to preparing for surgery, including a visit to your surgeon's office to discuss your surgical plan. During this visit, be sure to notify your surgeon of your current home medications, including over-the-counter medications, vitamins, and herbal supplements, and if you have had a recent illness or infection. This is a great opportunity to ask questions and address any concerns you have with your surgeon. Before surgery, you'll be instructed to stop aspirin, anti-inflammatory medications, supplements, or any other blood thinners. Quit use of all tobacco and nicotine products. Eat healthy food and increase your protein intake. Remove any loose rugs or cords from the floor to reduce your risk of falling. Move frequently used items to an easy-to-reach location. This will keep you from having to bend or twist to reach the items after surgery. Arrange for a family member or friend to drive you home from the hospital when you're discharged. You'll not be able to leave unless you have a driver. Arrange for a family member or friend to stay with you when you go home from the hospital. You will need help cooking, walking, and caring for yourself for at least a few days. Be sure to also make a plan for your pets to be cared for while you're away. You'll visit the hospital for your pre-admission testing visit prior to your procedure. Here, you'll be asked your medical history, previous surgeries, allergies, and medications. Please bring a complete and up-to-date list of your home medications to this appointment. Laboratory tests, such as blood work or an electrocardiogram, will be done as indicated, and a set of vital signs including your blood pressure, temperature, heart and respiratory rate, and oxygen level will be collected. Depending on your medical history, you may have to be approved for surgery by your medical doctor or cardiologist. You'll be notified if this is necessary. You'll be given day of surgery instructions, including instructions on what medications you need to take the day of surgery and what time to arrive. You'll be instructed not to eat or drink anything after midnight, the night before your surgery. If you are instructed to take any medications the morning of your surgery, please take only a sip of water when swallowing a pill. What should I bring to the hospital? Here you will see a list of items to bring with you to the hospital. When bringing your surgical collar or brace, please be sure to also bring the bag or container the device came in for proper storage during your hospital visit. It is important to bring your advanced directive to the hospital with you. For additional information on advanced directives, visit jackson.org and look under the Patient and Visitor Guide. You can also contact a Jackson Hospital patient representative at 293-8968.
please do not bring your home medications or valuables to the hospital. Jewelry, credit cards, checkbooks, money, watches, wallets, and electronic devices are all considered valuables. Hearing aids, dentures, eyeglasses, and contacts are also considered valuables but are necessary for daily living. These items should be left with a family member during your surgery and any time the items cannot be directly with you. Also, you may want to bring a few dollars for snacks or a newspaper. Thank you for watching. Please see our additional cervical spine surgery videos for information on spine anatomy and procedures, what to expect from your surgical experience, and after surgery care. Our spine team looks forward to caring for you. Just remember, at Jackson Hospital, we've got your back. Welcome, and thank you for choosing Jackson Hospital. This online class is intended to help you prepare for spine surgery by educating you on what to expect during your surgery experience. Watch this video with your family and any caretakers you'll have during and after surgery so they'll be better able to assist you. During this online class, our goal is to provide basic information on what to expect when you're at the hospital for surgery. Remember, the information in this class will not replace the information you receive from your doctor, nurses, and other members of your spine surgery team, but should help guide you through the spine surgery process. The Day of Surgery Please arrive at the hospital at the requested time. Jackson Hospital has two parking decks, and handicap parking is available throughout Jackson Hospital's campus. A shuttle service is available to take you to and from your car. The number for the shuttle is 293-8007. Jackson Hospital valet parking is also available in front of the hospital's main lobby, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for a $3 charge. Enter through the main hospital entrance and proceed to the second floor. The surgical waiting room is to the left when you exit off of the elevators. Check in at the second floor waiting room. From here, you'll be taken to a room in outpatient services. The day of surgery. You'll be frequently asked questions, such as your name, birthday, allergies, and pain level. Although these questions may seem repetitive, this is done to increase patient safety and assure you are receiving the best care. You can also expect frequent lab work and vital signs the day of surgery. Education will be provided throughout the surgical process. Be sure to bring your cervical patient guidebook so you can write down any additional questions you may have. You will change into a hospital gown, and your patient armband will be applied. Please hand over all belongings to a family member or friend to hold during your procedure. From outpatient services, you'll go to the holding room. Your family will be able to wait with you in your assigned outpatient room until you're transferred to the holding room. In the holding room, you will again be asked your name, birthday, allergies, and pain level. Your intravenous fluids will be started and vital signs collected. Safety checks and all final surgical preparations will be completed. This is your last stop before heading into the operating room. In the operating room, your anesthesiologist or certified registered nurse anesthetist, CRNA, will give you medicine to help you relax. You'll be safely positioned for surgery, and your heart, breathing, and blood pressure will be monitored throughout your procedure. A member of the surgery team will keep your family updated while you're in the operating room. After surgery, you'll go to the recovery room, also known as the Post-Anesthesia Care Unit, or PACU. You'll remain in this area 
until you are awake and your pain is under control. To monitor your vital signs, you'll have a blood pressure cuff and finger probe on. You'll have stickers on your chest to monitor your heart. You'll be asked to rate and describe your pain. Your family will be contacted by your surgeon after your procedure, and your PACU nurse will also contact your family and keep them updated on your plan of care. Where you go after the recovery room depends on if you'll be going home or staying at the hospital. If you're going home the day of surgery, you'll return to outpatient services. If you're spending the night at the hospital, you'll go to Six Tower, unless another floor is requested by your surgeon. Your family will be notified of the plan and called to come and stay with you once you arrive at your inpatient or outpatient room. If you're going home the day of surgery, you'll be prepared for discharge in outpatient services. Once again, your vital signs and pain level will be monitored. Your health care team will want to see that you can drink a liquid, walk, and urinate prior to sending you home. This is for your safety, to ensure your body functions are returning to normal after surgery and anesthesia. You'll be given discharge instructions and will be able to leave once your surgeon and anesthesiologist agree that you are fully recovered. Your family will be with you to hear your discharge instructions and ask any questions they may have about your plan of care. If you'll be staying in the hospital overnight, you'll be oriented to your hospital unit upon arrival, including unit safety precautions and how to contact your nurse. You'll also be educated by your health care team about your plan of care, medications, activities, signs and symptoms to report to the nursing staff and surgeon, how to get in and out of bed, and how to change your dressing. Your spine surgery education will continue throughout your hospital stay, and you'll be given instructions for how to continue your care once you're discharged home. Please keep your cervical guidebook with you so you can take notes and write down any questions you may have. Patients admitted to the hospital may have the following equipment and tubes after surgery, a dressing on your wound, possibly with a wound drain, an intravenous or IV line, a finger probe for monitoring your oxygen level, a bladder catheter for collecting your urine, intermittent pneumatic compression devices or IPCDs to help decrease your risk of a blood clot, and an incentive spirometer to help you take deep breaths and decrease your chance of post-op pneumonia. These items will be gradually discontinued throughout your hospital stay. You may receive the following medications and fluids while in the hospital. Intravenous IV fluids for hydration, antibiotics to help prevent infection, pain medication given in your IV by mouth or as an injection, a patient-controlled analgesia pump or patient-controlled pain pump, medications for nausea and muscle spasm, and your routine home medications. The nursing staff will educate you on the potential side effects of the medications you take. Your surgeon and anesthesiologist will order the appropriate medications for your recovery. You will continue intravenous IV fluids until you're eating and drinking well, and you'll begin taking a stool softener to prevent constipation. Be sure to ask questions if you're unsure of what a medication is or why you're taking it. While in the hospital, your surgeon may want you to work with our physical therapy department to help you begin to mobilize and improve your physical function. Physical therapists combine their knowledge of body mechanics and surgical procedures to create a plan of care that is right for you. Physical therapy will help you with your post-operative strength, range of motion, safe transfers in and out of bed, and mobility. Activity after surgery within the limits set by your surgeon will help decrease pain and contributes to a more successful recovery.
Post-operative pain is expected while your body heals from surgery. Notify your nurse when you're experiencing pain. You'll be asked to rate your pain on a scale of 0 to 10. Describing your pain will help your healthcare team select the best medications for treatment. Pain can also be treated without medication. Ice, massage therapy, physical therapy, music, and aromatherapy can help assist with pain control. If you're staying in the hospital after your surgery, you may receive a visit from a member of our anesthesia department the morning after your surgery. This is common for patients prescribed a patient-controlled analgesia pump or pain pump. Your nurse will teach you how to safely and effectively use your pain pump. Pain medications do have side effects, including dizziness, drowsiness, constipation, nausea, itching, and confusion. Alert your nurse if you're experiencing these symptoms. Medications such as Zofran, Benadryl, and Colace can be prescribed to help reduce these side effects. Talk with your nurses and surgeon about how your medication makes you feel. Your feedback will help your healthcare team determine the correct medications for you. For all patients, recovery is a gradual process. By following your surgeon's recovery instructions, you'll start to feel better day by day. The day of surgery, you will likely feel uncomfortable, but the pain should be bearable with medications. The day after surgery or post-op day one, you may feel tired and sore. It may hurt to move, but you will be receiving pain medication. By day two or three after surgery, you may still feel tired and sore, but your activity will have increased and you will require less help. After waking up from your surgery, your nutrition will start with ice chips and liquids. You'll start eating solid food once you're able to swallow and drink without nausea. For patients staying in the hospital, meals are served three times a day. Or family can bring your favorite foods in for you. Be sure to eat food high in fiber and protein and drink lots of fluids to prevent constipation. Your activity after surgery depends on your procedure. Your nurse will notify you of any activity restrictions. As you recover, your surgeon will want you up walking and out of bed for meals. Gradually increasing your activity and length of distance walked is important for your recovery. When being active, remember to minimize bending and twisting your neck. You'll have an increased risk of falling after surgery. Please call for assistance before getting out of a bed or chair while you're in the hospital. While at the hospital, you can reference your cervical guidebook for additional information and frequently asked questions. There's also a page for you to list your appointments and current home medications, as well as blank pages for taking notes. Thank you for watching. Please see our additional cervical spine surgery videos for information on spine anatomy and procedures, preparing for surgery, and after surgery care. Our spine team looks forward to caring for you. Just remember, at Jackson Hospital, we've got your back. Welcome, and thank you for choosing Jackson Hospital. This online class is intended to help you prepare for spine surgery by educating you on what to expect during your surgery experience. Watch this video with your family and any caretakers you'll have during and after surgery so they'll be better able to assist you. During this online class, our goal is to provide basic information on what to expect once you return home after surgery. Remember, the information in this class will not replace the information you receive from your doctor, nurses, and other members of your spine surgery team, but should help guide you through the spine surgery process. Your surgeon will instruct you as to what activities are allowed and activities to avoid after your procedure. 
You should avoid strenuous activities like lifting, pushing, and pulling, and also minimize bending and twisting your neck. Avoid lifting anything heavier than a gallon of milk for the first few weeks after surgery. Keep books and computer monitors at an appropriate height to avoid long periods of neck flexion. Be sure to start a daily walking routine. You may increase your activity as tolerated. Your goal should be to return to your pre-surgery activity level as soon as possible. Your recovery time will vary depending on your procedure. It's important to work with your surgeon to set reasonable expectations for your recovery. You'll need assistance with activities of daily living after surgery and may be limited in your ability to perform household chores, provide child and pet care, do yard work, and bathe and dress yourself. Place frequently used items in easy-to-reach locations and remove rugs or cords that could cause you to fall. Plan to have a family member or friend stay with you. No driving until approved by your surgeon. You may gradually return to these activities with approval from your surgeon. Do not immerse in water until cleared by your surgeon. This includes tub baths, hot tubs, and swimming pools. You'll be informed of what home medications to continue prior to your discharge from the hospital. Be sure to check with your surgeon before resuming a blood thinning medication. No smoking. Smoking will interfere with the healing process. The dressing used depends on your area of operation and the procedure performed. You may not even need a dressing. The nursing staff will help prepare you and your family or caretaker for dressing changes at home. Hand washing should always be done by the person changing your dressing before and after the dressing change. Be sure to keep your incision clean and dry and do not use lotions or ointments. When cleaning your wound, do not scrub your incision. Always look for signs of an infection when dressing changes are done. Inspect the wound daily for increased swelling, redness, warmth at the incision, and excessive or foul-smelling drainage. An oral temperature greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit can also be a sign of infection. Report any abnormal findings to your surgeon. Remember to keep your pets away from your dressing while you recover. Wound exposure to pet dander, fur, and feathers increases your chance of getting an infection. Your surgeon will decide if a cervical collar is needed after your procedure. The type of cervical collar chosen and requirements of wearing the collar will depend on the procedure performed. If your surgeon does choose for you to wear a collar after surgery, the collar should be worn at all times, but may be removed when you're showering or during any other activities specified by your surgeon. Do not drive while wearing your cervical collar. You'll be fitted for your collar, instructed on how to properly put on your collar, and given instructions on collar cleaning prior to being discharged. When cleaning the pads on your cervical collar, do so in front of a mirror. This will keep you from having to look down. Keep your head and neck still and leave at least one part of the collar or collar pads in place at all times. Your cervical collar should not come in contact with your incision. Always wear a light dressing between your cervical collar and your incision. Let your nurse know if you have any questions about how and when to wear your cervical collar prior to being discharged. You'll be prescribed medication to help with your pain after surgery. Try to begin decreasing your use of narcotic pain medications once you get home. If you have a spinal fusion, do not take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs. Common NSAIDs include, but are not limited to, ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, Aspirin, Aleve, and Toradol. 
do not drive while on narcotic pain medication or any medication that causes you to become drowsy. A cold compress may be applied to the surgical region two to three times a day for no more than 20 minutes per hour. Be aware of pain medication side effects. Side effects include dizziness, drowsiness, constipation, nausea, vomiting, rash, itching, confusion, respiratory depression, and long-term dependence. Notify your surgeon if the pain is not controlled by the prescribed pain medication or if you're experiencing difficulties with medication side effects. You may also experience a sore throat due to the breathing tube used during surgery. Gargling with warm salt water will help with this discomfort. What you eat after surgery will not only affect how you feel, but also directly influence wound healing. A diet high in protein is optimal after surgery. Drink plenty of fluids and eat fresh fruits, vegetables, and fiber. In order to be sure you're getting adequate nutrients, you can drink Ensure or Boost. These nutritional shakes are especially important if you're over the age of 60, had a spinal fusion, or if you have a decreased appetite after surgery. Taking pain medication may cause you to become constipated. A stool softener, such as Colace, may be taken twice a day as long as you're taking pain medication. Your surgeon will decide when you can return to work. This is based on the procedure performed and also the requirements of your job. Before returning to work, clarify if you will need to work a reduced schedule or need to be on light duty. You may start out with limitations and have to gradually return to your pre-procedure schedule and workload. Following up with your surgeon is an important and necessary part of your recovery. You will need to come to all of your follow-up appointments, even if you are feeling better and have no more pain. What if I have more questions once I get home? That's okay. You can reference your cervical guidebook for additional information and frequently asked questions. There's also a page for you to list your appointments and current home medications, as well as blank pages for taking notes. Some questions can only be answered by your surgeon. Look for your surgeon's picture in your patient guidebook, and the office number will be listed below. You can also find a list of important phone numbers on these pages. Remember to call 911 if you're experiencing an emergency. Thank you for watching. Please see our additional cervical spine surgery videos for information on spine anatomy and procedures, preparing for surgery, and what to expect at the hospital. Our spine team looks forward to caring for you. Just remember, at Jackson Hospital, we've got your back.